I'm here courtesy of a coconut. Eight weeks ago, I woke up on Monday morning. I didn't go to work. I don't have a job. I went walking in the forest, and I heard a and a coconut hit me in the face. <laughs> Broke my nose, bashed in my eye, cracked my skull, and worse than that, it pushed me off a high ridge and I landed on a rock 25 feet below. I broke my ribs in 17 places. I was very lucky. I was sitting there and it was like a bad movie, a bad cowboy movie where you kind of cough up blood and that's the end and I was very happy it wasn't the end. I went through a world of pain, more morphine than I ever want to have and I'm here. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. Last week, the Balinese priest found my soul beside the river and uh, he put it back in my body and this little string is here to remind me that my soul is back. And uh, all I can do now is continue the work. How many of you have been to Bali? How many of you want to go to Bali? Oh, that's a, I'm in a good crowd. <laughs> You've got a packet, I hope. And I hope in your packet you have this stuff, the grass. Don't smoke it. <laughs> Put it between your hands, both hands, and rub really hard. Some people didn't get grass. Everybody got grass. Okay, good. Now, rub hard and then do this. Now you know what Bali smells like. <laughs> the little packet, keep your little packet. There's more little tricks we're going to do because I want to connect you to Bali today. It's been five years since I started Green School. And it's a giant bamboo school with a new approach to sustainable architecture. You saw it being built. Okay. When, we are, when we started, we understood that the only way to make the school work was we had to attract people and build a community. That's the Green School Bridge. It's our icon. It was our first building. It was, has only been washed away once by global warming, but it's back, it's stronger, and it's better. Green School is working. It's a success. We have 250 kids from 40 countries, and 10% of the kids at the school are local Balinese kids on scholarship. The plan, the intention, is 20% and we will get there. These kids are getting an amazing education and they're smiling. How many of you smiled at school? <laughs> I didn't. What's happening is called the Green School Effect and it's taken hold and it's becoming a reality. In the five years that the school has been running, we've discovered a number of things. And that's what I'm going to tell you about today, things that have happened at Green School. The extraordinary, the extraordinary thing is that people see pictures of Green School and they decide to move there before they know it's in Bali. And when you tell your wife or your husband you're moving to a bamboo school and you can't even tell them where it is, we've created quite a lot of marital discontent. Some people have taken three years to get to green school because they're dragging their mate along behind them. But this is real power. The extraordinary sense of space and design at green school has inspired many things far beyond it. This beautiful bamboo home was built by a woman 
who was working in New York and just couldn't make a difference. Didn't get it. My d eldest daughter, Alora, returned to Bali and created an artisan-based bamboo building company. It's called Ibuku. Ibu, mom. Ku, mine. My mother, your mother, and the big mother, Mother Earth. The same artisans who built Green School are now building Green Village. And they are teaching us to do things differently. They build 3D models out of bamboo sticks. They engineer them and they become hand-built, bespoke houses. The results are natural, beautiful space that changes the behavior of the people that live in them. Who wouldn't, who wouldn't be inspired waking up in this house? The green, the green school effect is spreading. Developers from all over the world are running around. You've seen them looking for the next thing. They come to green school. This project is build being built by Indonesians. It will be the greenest hotel in the world and it's entirely made of bamboo. Who wouldn't want to check in here? Physicality, irresistibility, people will be making reservations before they know where the hotel is. These kids making chocolate. Where's the chocolate? Uh-oh. Take the chocolate. Take off the plastic. Sorry about the plastic. Put it in your mouth. Don't gobble it. Just let it melt on your tongue. This is chocolate from Bali, the taste of Bali, the smell, the taste. These green school kids were making chocolate by hand. And then green school parent Ben and his partner Freddie decided to make a lot of chocolate with this antique machine, raw chocolate. They built this factory near the school they chose bamboo, the world's biggest bamboo factory, raw chocolate for everyone. The health benefits are huge. You just took enough antioxidants to last you all week, which is a problem if you want to sell more chocolate. Every week you need one. The school is changing the parents. The parents are usually trying to change the school. This father wanted an amazing cup of fresh coffee. And this is how he did it. He went with his buddy Yeoman to the mountain. He found organic beans. He brought them home. He roasted them behind his house by hand. And he started a little company called Freak Coffee, a business based on fresh roast. This year, he opened three shops. Coffee is world class. You can taste it when you come to the school for lunch. He's teaching green school students about local business, and he's teaching them to be baristas. This is one of our students. Green school parent Steven Avara opened the Living Food Lab on campus. Steve spent the last three years looking for landmines in Cambodia. He found a lot. The business was influenced by the model of Green School. Now we have delicious raw food for the kids and a place that inspires a healthy community. How many of you eat rice? Put your hands up. This is up. Should be everybody, right? Keep your hand up if the rice you eat is brown. <laughs> oh, oh. Do you realize that all rice is brown? 
the nutritional value is stripped off in your rice mills and given to these guys. <laughs> They're really healthy. How do you feel? <laughs> At the Green School, kids plant rice, they harvest it, and they eat it brown, and they go home and tell their parents that it's brown. Whole food. It's our core value, and it keeps making the community, community better, healthier, and stronger. This is what we're doing in the parking lot. Think about the parking lot. It's important. We're going to grow food over every car, and the parents and kids will be able to pick it and take it home to eat. We're calling it the gorilla parking lot. And in that same parking lot, I met Eric Scoto of Akua Energy in Paris. This is what he does. He takes whole islands off the grid. He loves the school and he promised to do that for us too. 108 solar panels arrived at the school. And be careful what you wish for. Because what do you do with 108 solar panels in a beautiful school? Eric allowed us to do something that's never been done before. He allowed us to place the solar panels in a way that fitted in with the school. We floated them along the contour. We put them on bamboo poles. They are almost as efficient as the ones on the steel rack. And together, we made solar beautiful. This is the battery bank for the solar energy, green school style. We stacked up the batteries in a curve. We built a bamboo house to protect them. We put it in the garden between the eggplants and the corn. We are working on a carbon positive community. Everybody at the school was driving miles to get to an ATM. Our bank gave us an ATM and agreed for us to put it in a bamboo house. Bank International Indonesia is the proud owner of the world's first solar powered bamboo ATM <laughs> bolted to a rock. They sent the cement truck over to make it safe and we said, we've got a rock, we're fine. Putu Whitson, Green School pioneer, has reinvented traditional martial arts in our mud pits. It's become Indonesian wide. It was on the front cover of the Jakarta Post. Kids love getting dirty at school. Can you imagine? And the yoga mums are getting into the mud as well. Okay, here goes the next one. The effect that Green School is having on the kids is most important. These kids are the future. And they're starting businesses and making change now, not just in Bali, but also beyond Bali. Take this guy out. It's bamboo. Don't lose it. It's good for a free lunch when you come and visit the school. It's made by a company called Boobam. It was founded by one of our scholarship students, Gika, and her friends. It's on Facebook, Boobam. This is our gift to you. One day, my 11-year-old, Kiara, came to me and said, Dad, there needs to be iPads in the library. And I said, Kiara, the money tree is just that way. Go find it. She didn't go looking for the money tree. She went to the local ice cream store. Remember, she's 11. Convinced them to sell her ice cream wholesale. The kids sell the ice cream at recess. And with the profit they put, all the profit, they put seven iPads in the library. This is Mike. He was 
almost pulled out of the show. He makes soap, organic soap. His grandma kept giving him hankies and socks for his birthday, and he was tired of that. So he made the perfect present for grandmas to give to teenage boys, soap. Get them clean. The boys love it, but the twist is he makes it in the shape of things that boys want. Brass knuckles, hand grenades, many other designs are coming. Our star student, Izzy, went back to her Quaker school in Rhode Island. There, I, she was at Green School for one term. There she started a revolution. She created the first compost in her school. She's changed forever and her community is composting. The Green School dream has evolved into a reality. The amazing buildings full of adults and children are taking action beyond any dreams I ever had, a real education. So here we are in Taiwan. Big city. The dream is to build a bridge from Green School to your community, to communities all over the world. The Green School effect can happen anywhere. Just one simple thing. You make the roof high, and you let your people grow into the space. One last gift. It's a test for a school. It's a magic bean. Please take out your magic bean. It's uh, got something to do with a guy named Jack. You have a choice. You can leave it. It's in its packet. You can toss it. You can eat it or you can go find some dirt and plant it and grow more beans. I know you'll make the right decision. You've been given a lot of possibilities today. Let's go. Thank you. <laughs>